This video will discuss the addressing modes of the x86 assembly language and you'll see that the first few are similar to the addressing modes we discussed in assembly languages in general but as we move down this list things get a bit more specific and complicated. So the first two of these immediate and register operand are really identical to examples that we saw in our video about general addressing modes. So I'm going to skip those and go straight to the ones that are interesting. So the first one we will discuss is displacement. Now technically we already discussed displacement in the previous video, but in this video we'll be discussing how it works specifically in x86 assembly language. So let's start with an example. This simple move command uses displacement addressing with respect to this operand. AL is a register in x86. This register is simply addressed using register addressing. But what does this 4H inside of square brackets mean? Well, the H indicates that we have a hex value. So this is simply 4 in hex, which is 4 in general. But these brackets are what mean that we are discussing a memory address. So in what sense is this displacement? Well, in x86, whenever you're referring to a memory address, what you're actually referring to is a memory address with respect to a particular segment address. So there are special registers in x86, and these are all known as segment registers. Now, for the most part, you're not going to actually have to use these. Some commands do, but in many cases, these registers are used implicitly by particular assembly instructions in x86. In particular, DS is the data segment register, and this is the particular register that is used with this command here. So what value is placed into register AL by this move command? Well, here's memory, and DS contains a value that refers to some location in memory. Let's say it's right here. This value here is an offset from that register value. So if we move 4 hex down, then whatever value is at this location of memory is what will be placed into AL by this move command. In the language of x86, we often refer to the memory address that we look up in this manner as a linear address. And we can interpret this value that we look up with the following formula. So this says that the linear address we are looking for is the value contained inside of a segment register, that's what the SR will be, plus an address. So in this case, SR is the register DS, and A is the value 4H. So this is what displacement by itself means for x86. One final note about displacement is that some sources may actually refer to this as direct addressing. However, because we are actually offsetting from a segment register value, even though that segment register is implicit in this operation, it is still displacement and not direct addressing. Now that we have displacement out of the way, we can talk about these other addressing modes. But really, these are all just variations on the theme of displacement. In fact, most of them have displacement in the name. And even base can be thought of as a form of displacement. Ultimately, all of these addressing modes here share a lot in common. So in order to simplify this discussion, I'm actually going to start at the most complicated one because all of these other forms of displacement are actually sort of subsumed within this one here in a manner that you'll see in a moment. So we're kind of going out of order here, but bear with me. 
When using the addressing mode of base with scaled index and displacement, we compute the linear address, the location of the data we're looking for, using all of these terms. Now, if we have parentheses around a register, it means we are accessing the contents of that register. So SR is an implicit segment register, as we just had with displacement a moment ago. But then we have some new things. So I is an index register, S is a scaling factor, B is a base register, and A is an address, which means this is a n number that is directly included into the instruction. So what does all this mean and how can we interpret this? So the best way to make sense of this is with an actual x86 instruction. Now first, I'm going to introduce a feature of x86, which is the ability to define arrays, or at least array-like structures, within a data segment. So if I have a program and I say dot data at the top, then I can define an array. I'll choose to call mine my array, and then put several values in it. But first, I have to specify how big each element is. So there are several data types in x86. One of them is D word for double word size. And I'll put several values in here. And to make it clear what I'm doing, I'm going to define the values in hex. So these are the values in my array. And then after this, I'll start my code segment. And I'll put this inside of a main procedure. And in order for this example to make sense, I'm going to have to put some values into certain registers just to set things up. So I have these two commands. I've put 2 into EBX and 4 into ECX. I have not yet used the base with scaled index and displacement addressing approach yet. Here it comes now. And here we finally have it. This final command here uses base with scaled index and displacement addressing. In this example, EBX is an index register. ECX is a base register. My array, although it looks like a variable here from the data segment, when this code is assembled, an actual hard-coded memory address corresponding to this location will be put into the actual instruction. So we have a symbol here that we're using in our assembly code, which makes it easier for a human to read. But when it gets converted into a machine instruction, this will be a memory address. And so this is the A of the base with scaled index and displacement scheme. And as before, the segment register will be DS for the data segment, but that is implicit. It is not explicitly specified. The brackets indicate that I'm getting the contents of the address defined by this formula. So this addressing scheme essentially lets us directly define uh, a memory address with a sequence of addition and multiplication operands within certain bounds. We can't put arbitrary formulas in here. They, they have a very restricted form. Now you may wonder why this form is useful. Well, let's find out what value this actually computes. So a D word, a double word, is a data type or unit in x86 which consists of four bytes. That's why the value four is used here. This is a scaling factor. So the idea is that in this array, every single one of these entries takes up four bytes. So if I want to jump through these values one index at a time, I actually have to move forward four bytes at a time. So the scaling factor of four does that for me. EBX is treated like an index in the array. However, I also have ECX as an offset, and then my array is the address location of the array in memory, 
it's sort of the base address of the array. So what value is this? Well, we start at whatever location my array is. That actually points at the first element. If we add four to that, that moves us to the second element because this is four bytes after the first one. And then EBX is two, two times four is eight. That is one, two more positions. So this value here is the hex value 23. Before moving on, let's compare this actual x86 command once again to this representation of what base with scaled index and displacement is calculating for its linear address. So as I said before, the segment register is implicit in this command. It is not here. It's the DS register, but that is not present. All the other components, however, directly correspond to components of this abstract formula. EBX is the index register. 4 is the scale factor. ECX is the base register. And this symbol, my array, is the address A. And so this is the most complex addressing scheme we have in x86. But all we're really doing with the other addressing schemes is removing components of this formula. For example, going back to our list, if we move one step up, then we have base with index and displacement. All we've removed is the scale factor. The result is the following. So here, I'll remove scaled and I'll also remove the scale factor and I'll remove it from the actual command as well and so I'm left with EBX plus ECX plus my array. So this type of addressing would be appropriate if the scale factor happened to be 1 which is the case if you have for an example an array of bytes as opposed to words or double words. Now instead of removing the scale factor in the scaled index with displacement we remove the base register. So for this one we will keep the scale factor and remove the base register and for the option above that base with displacement we start from here and then remove the index. So here we have no scale factor no index, but we do have a base and a displacement. And then finally, at this top one, we have only a base. I'm going to summarize these last three methods all at once because of their similarity. So here's how their addresses are calculated. And here are the formulas for the next three addressing modes along with their example instructions. For scaled index with displacement, we have the implicit base register plus the index register, in this case EBX, multiplied by 4, our scaling factor, plus our address, which is designated by the symbol my array in this example. Base with displacement keeps my array and switches over to using ECX as a base register instead of having an index register combined with a scaling factor. And then base is simply the base register, and once again with the implicit segment register. So this group of addressing modes that I've just finished discussing are all alike in that they look up values in memory, and they are implicitly, usually, offset from a segment register. This one I saved for last, the relative addressing, is usually used for jump instructions because it calculates an address relative to the current program counter. So here's how relative addressing works. With relative addressing, the linear address is an offset, A, with respect to the program counter. So the program counter is a register that indicates where the current process is in its execution.
and A is some offset from that current location. So you often see it used in jump instructions like jump loop start or jump zero loop end. Now these are examples of labels that you would put in your assembly program but when the program is actually assembled and converted into a machine instructions all of these labels get replaced with the actual memory offset address values. So when you do a jump you are basically telling the program to move a certain number of instructions forward or backward with respect to wherever you currently are. All the math that determines those numbers happens during the assembling and linking phase of actually creating an executable program out of your assembly code. And those are all the x86 addressing modes. We'll be using x86 code much more in later videos.